this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm going to show you how I make a really simple frame, a stretcher frame, so that I can stretch my fabric on it to paint a smaller sky for, usually in my case, a smaller landscape or a mini landscape. The things that I use for this project, I happen to have an old frame. You could use any kind of a frame. This is just simple little pine that I uh, put together, and this has mitered corners, but your corners could be butted that just whatever is really simple. And this, as you can see, has been used, so I'm recycling it for this project. In the past, I've a stapled fabric on to paint, but it's much easier to use to do it this way and use tacks. So that's what else you'll need. You'll need some tacks, and I have nickel tacks here. They're really good quality, nice and strong. A paintbrush that's not one of your best paintbrushes because you're going to use it in gel medium and you don't want it to be ruined. Then I have gel medium and you can use any brand, and I use matte, it doesn't need to shine for this project. And a pencil, I'll be using a red marker so that you can see it a little bit better. An artist canvas that is not primed or gessoed, and you want enough so that my frame is uh, an inch wide, so because there are four sides, I want at least four inches wide, this one's already been cut, and as long as the longest part plus an inch of your frame, of one of your sides of your frame. You can use a, a draw a line in, with a straight edge and use regular scissors to cut this, but I'll be cutting mine with a rotary cutter. So I have a rotary cutter, a mat, and a plastic acrylic ruler. I also have a surface down that won't get damaged because the acrylic is, excuse me, the matte mat medium gel is uh, dries like a plastic, so I want to make sure I'm on a surface that won't matter. Okay, let's get started. To cut the strips of canvas, I will lay my canvas folded in half. You can do this lengthwise without it being folded if you want, but it's easier to do it. In my opinion, it's easier to do it folded in half. And if you haven't cut any, like I said, I've already cut from this, but if you haven't cut any, you can take this over your, in my case, four inches, depending on how wide your ruler is, and then just cut from here and scoot it over an inch. But I'm gonna go ahead, I only need one strip because my other strips are cut. And I'm going ahead and set my ruler on the one inch line on the edge of the canvas. And this is not picky, doesn't have to be exactly straight. Push hard and move this before I move my ruler and that cut through, so that's great. And I will move the ruler and the cutter away. So now what I have, grab my frame, are four pieces. Two of them fit my short edge, but we'll start with the longer edge here. So I have them and they hang, hang over the edge, the outside corners, about a half inch, a little less than that, but a half inch is fine. And that's just going to be on the long sides. On the short side, when I lay my strip along, it's going to just come to the edge like this. It won't be flipping over the, laying over the edge. So I'm going to take my strip, let's start with the short one, because the short ones are going to have a tack in the very corner. I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to put a dot in the center. And I'm going to put a dot, if we look at the corner here, and I bring it to the edge, it would be, because this is an inch square, it would be in a, in a half of inch, in a half of an inch, and over a half of an inch, approximately. Not picky on this. Now we don't want our <clears throat> tacks to be any further apart than three inches. So I'm going to say I'm going to put two more tacks in here. I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to eyeball it, and that's good. And I'm going to find my other short piece. That's a long one. And I'm going to lay it right against that one, and I'll do the same thing. I'll just put the dots. Use that as a guide. Don't have to be exact. Put the dots closest to the center of the width is good. That's more important than this way, really. And then I'm going to flip this over, line up the center one, and put a dot on this one, put a dot here, and put a dot in the about a half inch in on the end. And I'm going to flip this one around and do the same thing. Dot 
there and a dot here and a dot there. So those two strips are done and those will be where my tacks go. We'll move to that next. But first we're going to move on to the longer strip. Again, I will fold it in half. Put a crease in the center. Open it back up. And put a dot there. Now on this one, I will not be putting a dot on this outside edge because of this, the tack's going to go through this dot and it's going to just come up here wherever that is once I start laying them down. But I do need the other dot. So, and I'll look and see is this pretty close to being enough. So I'm going to just use that short strip to give me the other tacks. And then the, the last one will be here. Again, I'll use that short strip for my guide for where to put the tacks the marks for the tacks and then I'll use the long this long one to mark them on the other one on the other long piece okay now next we're going to take a short strip <clears throat> and our tacks and we're going to push our tacks right through those red spots. And even while you're doing this, if it feels like you have too big a gap or they're too close together, you can just, just sort of wing it and stick them through so that they're spaced a good couple, three inches apart. Now I'll do that same thing for the other side, but I will do that without making you watch since you watched that. But first we're going to take one of the longer ones and we'll put them in the, one of the long ones so that I can show you what, we'll, what will be taking place. These are very sharp. You hope they're sharp because that's what you really want for the, fab, for the fabric to go onto. So just be really careful when you're poking them through that you don't shish kebab yourself so they're on the long one and on the short one and when they're glued down which we'll do next they go like this so I was just going to show you let's show you on this corner that when this this one will be glued down first my short sides will be glued down first and it comes to the corner so that when I put this piece on I'll sort of eyeball how it it will just poke on that's why there's not a dot there for this tack it will just poke onto that so the first thing we're going to do now after we have the tacks in all of our strips I'll just go ahead and move on with this one we're going to take our gel medium and our paintbrush and this dries fast, so you want to keep the lid on when you're not using it, if you can. Uh, if, you, if you're concerned about your brush, you might want to have a little jar of some water or something, because if it dries on there, it's a hard plastic brush, and you probably won't be able to use it anymore. So, just be later. And you could use a scoop and put it into something else, but I'm just going to go ahead and scoop out of this. I'm going to use a fairly generous amount, but I want a somewhat thin layer because I'm going to put a layer onto the frame and then I'll put a layer onto my tacks. Just want to make sure there's good coverage all the way to the edge and on every each long edge. Then when I go to paint the tack side I want to push a little bit under that tack so that that tack will have a better chance of sticking to the canvas. And if you don't like getting this kind of stuff on your hands, you might want to put on gloves. Definitely have something to wipe your hands off. Something you don't care about to wipe your hands off on. Let's stick a little underneath the cap of the tack. 
just give it a good coat. the lid back on your gel. Now I'm going to take it, the piece, and I'm going to put it back on the side. And on the first side, or the short sides, I like to start in the center and just kind of give it a little massage around and work my way to the end so that we're really, you can feel that gel medium coming up through the canvas and that's what you want. And it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for it to start adhering. And if you need to put a little bit more down It'll start to set up and then things will stay better where you want them. Now I'm going to rotate it and just show you how I do the edge. Whoops, let's go this way. Because you you can you know how to do that side now, and we'll do that again. Um, I'll show that one finished. But right now, we're just going to use one of our long pieces that we put the tacks in, and we'll do the same thing. And I'll just show you the difference at the edge here. So I'm just going to apply right on top of that now. On this, <clears throat> excuse me, short side, I'll be putting that right on top of the piece that's there, the little strip that's already there. I have a video for a larger frame that is made differently. This is, I think, a little more doable for everybody, most everybody, and um, I also use this for smaller pieces. The other frame I like to use for my half yard pieces. Okay, so the gel is on every bit of that. I'm gonna put a little more down here, and as that sets, it will hold in place. I'm going to flip this over and center it the best I can, noticing how it hangs over because that's the important part. Then I will start in the center. It's no big deal if you do or not, but I, the idea is to get it set down on these, this strip so that I'm down here to the tack and then I will push it through the tack. And I'm going to give, I can tell that's a little dry, so I'm going to give a little teeny bit of more medium to the end of that strip and to the side of the frame actually. So it's going to gush out there and really get take it make a good grip and so that will help this first piece stay on there nice and uh, secure. Again we'll do the rubbing it, pressing it down, trying not to stab yourself on those wonderfully sharp tacks and down to the other side, it's on here. So that, that's what we'll do though. The exact same thing I did down on this side, we'll do on this side once my this part of the frame is on there. So I'll finish with that and then we'll come back and I'll show you what we do after that. Okay, we're back and I have all my sides 
canvas strips are attached to each of the sides. And I'm going to give them a little bit of a rub, a little more of a rub and a massage and push down and make sure the edges are down so that I make sure the tacks are nice and firm. So then I'm going to take gel medium again and I'm going to go over the entire piece all around those tacks and all around the edges. This is going to do two things, make it more secure for one thing, but it's also, this is why I want to make sure this one gets really good coverage at this point, it's going to waterproof for quite some time all the edges so that when I use it, because my fabric gets very wet when I'm painting, it will, the water won't soak through there and cause any damage or loosen the canvas. And I'll just keep going all the way around. This is one reason you don't use a good, especially good brush also because it, uh, you're pushing pretty hard to get that gel down into that canvas and covering the edges. So it's pretty hard on a brush. So I'll just go ahead and continue on all the way around. Any edges that seem to be kind of popping up, I'll just put a little extra gel on those. And as it starts to dry, it will start to set a little bit and then you can push the pieces down and then they're more likely to, to hold. Even after it starts drying, I'll go out and check because we have a really nice sunny hot day here. It does take or at least I would suggest giving it at least 24 hours to dry. The longer you let it dry, the stronger it will hold. At least to a point anyway. Okay, so all the top has had a coating of the gel, and I can see there's still some sides that I need to work down a little bit. And the thing I'm going to do right before I take it out to dry, or set it out to dry, is to take, and I use my fingers, it's just easier I think, but you can use a tissue or paper towel, and you're going to wipe off each of the tack tips. And that way your fabric will have a better chance of slipping onto them pretty easily. So now it's ready and I'm going to take it and in my case I'm going to set it out set it out in the sunshine to dry. I'll go check it maybe in 20 minutes or so see if my sides need to be uh, pressed down a little bit more so that they'll hold on these little overlaps. So when it's dry, I'll bring it back and we'll talk about applying the fabric to it. While my frame dries, I'm gonna go ahead and use another frame that I've recently made and this frame's a little bit smaller, otherwise it's the same, made the exact same way. I have a piece of fabric and when I cut my fabric for these frames, I cut it about an inch, well it ends up being a half of an inch longer and wider all the way around. That's why I have something to hold on to as I push it down onto the tacks. I also use a cork. This happens to be a champagne cork and it seems to work really well. Another thing to think about is your fabric may have a salvage edge on it. Here it is on this piece. It's hard to tell on these white fabrics, but that's just uh, tightly woven on the salvage. If it's bunching the fabric up, 
then you'll want to cut the salvage off and not use that. But in here it's really smooth, so I'm just going to use it. That won't be painted. The painted part that's usable generally is only what is inside the frame. So we want to make sure that that's at least big enough for the piece of art that you're going to create with this. You can use the other parts. I often do use those in some unusual way. And even if your landscape sky or whatever you're making is smaller, the extra pieces can be used to make flowers. They make really neat cards or you can put them on pillows or all different kinds of things. So I'm going to start in a corner and make sure my fabric's pretty even all the way around the frame. And I'm going to push down with the, with the uh, cork. And sometimes the cork brings it back up so you might have to uh, hold down on the fabric when you bring the cork up. And then I'm going to pull it on the opposite side, making sure it's about even. Pull it kind of firmly. That's why you wanted your canvas glued down very well. And I'll push that down. And then I'll come to the center and push. And this cork has been used a lot, so it's making a little bit of a crease. That's no big deal, really since that part's not, that's not where we're worried about painting. Inside here it is. So then I get one side down, and you can do all four corners, but sometimes I find it doesn't go quite evenly, so often we'll just do one side at a time. Once I pull this tight, it will seem tight, and it might be, but depending on, and I may still, if I see a wrinkle over here, I might lift this one off and put it back on. But once I, when I paint, I get my, my fabric all damp. And when you do that, the fibers, of course, will stretch. So you may have to, and this is a little extra long on this side, so I'm going to come over to the short side and do that first. You may have to adjust it or do this again once your fabric is damp. Because if it's stretched, you don't want it saggy. The, the reason that I like to put my fabric in a frame is because I have a little bit more control of the fabric. When I lay my fabric on a surface to paint it, the way I do it anyway, anything on that surface is going to affect the way the paint moves or the mark that's left when I'm painting. So I like to have my paint, my fabric rather suspended so it's up. So this is pretty tight. I would maybe use that a little tighter again, but I will wait and I will spritz it all with water and get it very damp with a spray, a light mist or spray bottle with good clean water. And if it needs to be, I will pull it again to make it tighter. And that's how I set up a frame to paint my sky fabric. If it's necessary, you can take a little dry paintbrush and just dust off around those, those uh, tack tips where the, the cork might have left a little bit of a mess. That's only because this cork has been used a few times. If you use a good new cork, it probably won't matter. And you can push them on with your hands, but again, they're very sharp, be careful. So that's my frame for stretch and fabric, and you can see a link for the video where I do paint a fabric on this frame, or on a frame a little bit bigger, just like this. And I really appreciate you watching. Like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne. Thanks for watching.